everyone, welcome to OCD Hi-Fi Guy. Um, take a look at this piece here. This is Mikey, Mikey Concept at, in action. And I got a hold of an excellent designer named Phil Marchand, who's been doing filters for a long time, otherwise known as crossovers. And this puppy is beautiful. I'll tell you, it's really a treat when you can find a designer that is willing to let you call out spec and parts and all that kind of stuff, and then they build it to your spec. Boy, to me, that's like heaven. Um, this is my whole, this is all my design. Those are my knobs. Those are, that's my switch far left. Um, everything about this, I called all that. That's all Wema that he didn't normally use, um, unless it was spec'd out. See the resistors are all mil spec, uh, style. Um, the whole nine, everything's just pimped. And, um, so that's great, man. I love it when they will let you dream up your own things and they'll make it happen for you. So. Hats off to Phil Marchand. We'll play it, and hopefully it sounds as good as it looks. But So here's what it is. It's a four-way active crossover, okay? So this means you can get rid of, you don't have to use any of the crossover at your speaker at all. And the idea is, you know, it allows you to discreetly power your frequency for each amplifier and each, each driver. So let me, let me go back, and I'll say that again. The signal comes into here before the amp, and then it comes out of here, and it comes out of here in four different levels. Low, low, mid, mid, high, mid, and high. Okay, so these are the four. So clearly you have your subwoofer, your woofer, your mid-range, and your tweeter. Okay, that's to give you an example. And you put one amp channel on every one of those. So you could either, you can, and you could do this different ways. You could have four monoblock amps on the right, four monoblock amps on the left. You could have two stereo amps, um, on the right, two stereo amps on the left, or you could have one four-channel amp on the left, one four-channel amp on the right. Uh, any way you want to do it, each particular chunk of the frequency band is dedicated its own amplifier. So what that means is the amplifier only amplifies the low mids. It's not sending them like when you go through a passive like is on your on, comes inside your speaker, that means you're sending 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz to every one of these. They're getting the full bandwidth, and then um, the amplifier amplifies the full bandwidth, and then when it gets to your speaker, it filters it out and turns it to heat. So it's really wasteful because your amp, all four of your amps are going, and, 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 and um, they're amplifying a full frequency band, and you're you're not even using that. You're, you're you're bleeding it off once you get to the passive, and you're and you're just filtering it out, and it turns to heat, and it's just a big waste. So by doing this, this is the cream of the crop. This is the way the real high end. If you really are just a purist, recording studios do it this way. This is just to get the lowest distortion and most clarity, and it's just the most. There's no phase weird crap that happens with passive radiators, or I mean passive. Um, uh, crossovers, all that kind of stuff. This takes care of it. Okay. So there's, again, there's one input, there's four outputs for these, cause we've got a four way setup here. And then if you look in here, Phil does not do this normally. He drew this board up for me and designed it because what I wanted was differential and he does not normally make differential filters. What differential means is that, okay, you come in on an XLR, which is balanced. Balanced is different from RCA or single-ended because it has positive, uh, positive signal, negative signal, and ground. It's got the three conductors. And RCA is just signal and ground. This one divides positive and negative signal and ground because for noise rejection, okay? And it's very effective. Very effective at noise rejection. You also get more output on each circuit from this because there's two where there's normally one in the other designs, there's two whole circuit paths. Um, so this is what you call truly balanced, a truly balanced circuit. What you've got over here is, is, is if, if they just do that, it's just balanced inputs and outputs. It does not mean you're getting a fully balanced or differential circuit. It only means you have the inputs and the outputs. 99% of things that have XLRs on them are not differential. They're not the full real boat, okay? This is, this is legit as it gets. The reason that I wanted to do this like this, another thing too, 
um, was, for, was for noise. That's why I want to do differential for noise because I also, I want it to stay balanced all the way through the circuit, all the way from the front to the back end. Normally, what would happen is you'd come in here and then you'd change it to single-ended. You'd go across the board single-ended and then you'd come off the board and you'd switch it back to, you'd change it back to XLR when you went out of this thing. And so it's a whole conversion that can be avoided if you just leave everything balanced. It goes through the whole rig, balanced and differential, never ever having a conversion. So that's pretty cool. Also, normal uh, EQ or normal crossovers will use op amps, like the little op amp chips. And yeah, they're, they're, they're very effective in certain regards and they have great spec and low distortion and stuff and all that. But um, they can have a glare sound of their own because they're a silicon chip, you know, and you're putting your signal through there. So rather than take that chance, I asked if he could do it fully discrete as well. So if you look right here on each side, they're, they're little transistors that were used instead of op amps uh, in order to, um, to power these little areas to, to, to give them the current that they need. Um, so that's pretty, this is trick, trick as it gets, man. I mean, this is full tilt boogie. And then it's got the killer knobs and the, and the cool nomenclature. This is for 11 stereophonic. This is gonna be a brand that I bring forth with um, super cool and innovative products. None of them overpriced, all of them uh, very fair and, and actually strong value in the market. And um, here's what the, this, I've always used this. It's kind of like on all my amps and stuff that I build, it's a, it's a circuit breaker. So you see that? It's not only is it a switch uh, to turn on and off, but it's a circuit breaker. So it eliminates the need for any fuse. Like back there, you normally have that little fuse so we don't have to worry about what fuse do you got in there, you blue or black? No, you don't have to worry about that because you just have a circuit breaker and so you don't worry about fuses. Fuses are not needed. Um, so, um, and then that's an NCF, uh, NCF uh, inlet socket for the power. And um, and think that's that was it that I provided him. We've got, looks like we've got some up, upgraded caps on the power supply, nice little toroid. I may back this up here with some mu metal. But I don't know if, um, if if aluminum may stop the magnetic. Um, he's obviously put it up to the top here, so this is acting like a shield. Sure, um, we can beef that up by putting a little moo metal on there. Um, anyways, so that is the Marchand Custom Mikey crossover made by Phil Marchand. We'll have this thing in, in here this weekend, and we'll see how it, how it rocks. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining. See you.